Hello. Um, if you're watching this segment, uh, I'm hopeful that you uh, have downloaded the guidelines of the paper and uh, maybe even have watched that video that, uh, that came before this one regarding the paper one guidelines. And so you understand that this is an argumentative paper. And uh, part of what that means is you need to take a unique and original stance on the central question. Now, as you know from reading Frederick Douglass, the, the claim that he tries to make is that slavery is an institution that victimizes everybody in American life. It victimizes slaves, slave owners, and non-slave owning whites. Everybody, in some way, shape, or form, according to Frederick Douglass, is worse off because of the institution of slavery than if slavery never would have existed. This is the argument that he has. As you know, I've asked you to dissect that argument and say whether or not you agree with it. Now, what I'm going to do in this segment is, is help you. I'm going to give you a push in the right direction. So what you should do right now is you should put me on pause and grab your book. Um, if you want to get a copy of the actual book that I have assigned uh, that you bought in the bookstore, go ahead and do that. Or you can look online, open up another window, and uh, download a copy of Frederick Douglass, I'll give you the page numbers. So go ahead and put me on, uh, on pause and come right back. <clears throat> okay, um, one of the first and probably most obvious groups uh, that is victimized by slavery are the slaves themselves. Now you think about this and some obvious obvious victimization comes to mind, the fact that they were held against their will, the fact that they were worked very, very hard for no money, the fact that they were owned by another human being. Um, that's really, really obvious. That's surface level victimization. I would argue, and I think Douglas does argue, that there's deeper victimization that goes on when it comes to the victimization of the slaves. What I'd like you to do for a few minutes, and you're probably going to need to put me on pause, come up with a list of attributes, characteristics, things that are comprised of identity. In other words, what comes to mind when I say the word identity, personal identity? Go ahead and put me on pause. What'd you come up with? I bet a lot of you probably said something to the effect of family, values, the environment in which you grew up in or were raised. What about your last name? Where did you get that from? Right? What about the way that you see the world? All of those things make you who you are. Now, one of the things that Douglas is going to make a case for, and I think it's very well founded, that slave owners victimize the slaves by stripping them of their identity, or he might think of it as stripping them of their humanity. That's worth writing down. The slaves were victimized by a dehumanization process known as stripping them of their humanity. Let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> if you've got a copy of this book, flip it open to page 30. Now if you're following along online in the text that I put up online, that's going to be on page 22. If you look at the paragraph that starts out, the reader will pardon so much. Do you see that? The reader will pardon so much. Read along with me. The reader will pardon so much about the place of my birth on the score that it is always a fact of some importance to know where a man is born, if, indeed, to be important to know anything about him. In regard to the time of my birth, I cannot be as definite as I have been respecting to the place, nor indeed can I impart much knowledge concerning my parents. Genealogical trees do not flourish among slaves. A person of such some consequence here in the North, sometimes designated father, is literally abolished in slave law and in slave practice. It is only once in a while that an exception is found to this sentiment. You think about what he's saying there. He doesn't know when his birth date is. I mean, one of the most fundamental things on any form of identification 
who makes you or what makes you who you are, how old are you? When were you born? What was the day? What was the time of your birth? I mean, it goes so much further beyond official documentation, driver's licenses, birth certificates, and so forth. This is a process of dehumanizing the slave because the slave doesn't know when he was born, where he was born. In other words, slaves, people of African ancestry during this time period in American history, were thought of as something of subhuman. Do you see where I'm going with this? Do you see where Douglas is going with this? This is how Frederick Douglass believes that slaves were victimized by the institution that was slavery. Birth dates, your age, are only one aspect of what makes you who you are. Flip the page over, if you've got this book, flip it over to page 32. And if you're following along online, that would be page 24. There's a paragraph. It's actually, if you've got this book, it's at the top of the page. Go down about halfway to the middle of the page. And on the very right side, it starts out, the practice of separating children. If you need to put me on pause, put me on pause and find that sentence. The practice of separating children. Find that sentence. Okay. The practice of separating children from their mothers and hiring the latter out at distances too great to admit of their meeting, except at long intervals, is a marked feature of the cruelty and barbarity of the slave system. But it is in harmony with the grand aim of slavery, which, always and everywhere, is to reduce man to a level with the brute. It is a successful method of obliterating from the mind and the heart of the slave all just ideas of the sacredness of the family as an institution. Stop for a second. How many of you listed family or heritage as part of what makes you who you are? I would guess many of you did. What's the purpose of separating slave children from their mothers? Well, of course, part of it is that the mothers had to go back to work. That was part of the whole intent of slavery. But the other part is, is to get them to think of themselves as something other than human. In other words, they weren't good enough to be left with their mothers the same way that other people in American society were at that particular moment in history. It's about convincing the slave that he has no worth as a human being. Or, as Douglas might put it, it victimized the slaves as it stripped them of their humanity. It dehumanized them. One more example that I wanted to get to, and if you flip the page, if you've got this book, if you flip it to page 54, or online, that would be page 45, um, about toward the bottom third of the page in the book, there's a paragraph that starts out, among other slave nobilities, notabilities rather, among other slave notabilities? Find that sentence. Among other slave notabilities of the plantation was one called by everybody Uncle Isaac Cooper. It is seldom that a slave gets a surname from anybody in Maryland, and so completely has the South shaped the manners of the North in this respect that even abolitionists make very little of the surname of a Negro. The only improvement on the Bills, Jacks, Jims, Neds of the South, observable here that William, John, James, Edward are substituted. It goes against the grain to treat and address a Negro precisely as they would treat and address a white man. Now, what he's saying there is, is relatively complicated. It speaks to the very heart of the issue of identity. I mean, your name makes you who you are. Now, what we're getting here is almost a forced identity, an identity that is given to you not through your family or through your heritage, but some sort of outside force. And once again, Frederick Douglass is making a claim, and a very well-founded claim, I would add, that the system of slavery is dehumanizing the slave. It's stripping him of his humanity. Now, I want you to think for a second, because I've given you three different examples, and the book is littered with them, 
you, you only need to pick it up and read it to find more. But I've given you three examples of ways in which slaves were victimized by the institution of slavery. Now what's important is to connect this to what we've been learning in class. Connect this to the, uh, to the online videos. If you recall, in the first, uh, I believe it's uh, lesson five, uh, diversifying British North American colonies, it talks about something called the Middle Passage. Um, as many of you are probably aware of, because this was a question on the exam, the Middle Passage was a process of transporting captured Africans, slaves, to the New World, and where they would later be sold. You think about the victimization of, of, of slaves, the Middle Passage is absolutely part of that, because similar to treating someone as their subhuman, Africans that were captured in Africa by Europeans and then sent to the New World were thought of as cargo. They were thought of as commodities rather than actual human beings. So you can see a connection between what Frederick Douglass is saying and what we've been learning in class. You can also see a connection in your online readings. There are several that, uh, that I think should bear a little bit of importance. For example, in Online Readings 3, page 50, there's a reading entitled The Groans of the Plantation. Take a look at that and relate it to what Frederick Douglass has to say about the victimization of the slaves. Um, take a look at Slavery and Prejudice, which is also located in Online Readings 3, page 53. Relate it to what Frederick Douglass has to say about the victimization of the slave. I'm hopeful that what this did was it gave you some food for thought when it comes to writing the paper. What I would do now is I would focus on issues that involve the victimization of slave owners through the system of slavery.